Middlesbrough to look forward to when we join Central Sports Special at 10.50 tonight here on HTV West. Right now we cross over to the ITN studios in London for the news at 10. Douglas Brand, jailed for life for spying in Iraq, is freed. Delors heard clash, Britain rejects plans for federal Europe. Mr. Brooke gets Ulster parties around the table and talking. Too late for some, South Africa abolishes race classification. And the state of calamity left by Volcano Pinatubo. Within the last hour, Iraq has announced that Douglas Brand, the British engineer jailed for life for spying, has been freed on the personal orders of President Saddam Hussein. His release came after secret negotiations between the Iraqi president and the former Prime Minister Edward Heath. The talks were so secret that the Prime Minister, Mr John Major, was apparently only told about them after Mr Brand was let out of prison. Mr Heath said tonight he welcomed Mr Brand's release and he hoped it would be seen as a step forward in relations between Britain and Iraq. We'll have a report in a few minutes. The Foreign Secretary, Mr Hurd, said no today to a European Community document referring to Europe's federal destiny. That means a sort of United States of Europe. Mr Hurd said the community should operate as a group of nation states, that Britain was against any wholesale transfer of power to Brussels. Mr Hurd, at a foreign minister's meeting in Luxembourg, also said references in the EC document to a single European currency should be taken out. The President of the European Commission, Monsieur Jacques Delors, said European Union was far too important to take into consideration a momentary political problem in one EC member state. In a speech in Chicago tonight, Mrs Thatcher is expected to say that if the European community suppresses nationhood, it will destroy itself. Outside today's talks, as the Foreign Secretary arrived, a noisy protest from striking civil servants. Within, he was to face a serious threat to the government's hopes of cooling the political temperature of the European debate. The community's foreign ministers had gathered to consider the latest draft of a plan for European political union. It was intended to be a compromise that would satisfy both Britain and those who believe in a United States of Europe. It failed, and the issue could now provoke a row between John Major and the other community leaders at next week's EC summit. The ideas for European political union being discussed today are based on what is known, in the somewhat abstruse jargon of community negotiators, as the temple concept. At the top, the Council of Europe, that's the term for the 12 community heads of government who meet regularly at EC summits. Below, three so-called separate pillars which would divide the principal areas of the community's activities. Cooperation would be closest on economic and trade matters. This pillar would be based on the Treaty of Rome, which already exists. But cooperation in two other areas, internal national issues like law and the police, and external issues like foreign policy, would be dealt with separately. Britain supports the concept of a temple structure. It's the inclusion of a reference to Europe's federal destiny that's alarmed the government. It's the first time the phrase has appeared in the draft. The founders of the community were wise. They did not talk about a federal destination for Europe or a federal vocation. They talked about an ever closer union. That suits us. That is what we're working. And uh, we're prepared to see it come ever closer. But we're not prepared to see a, a definition. We're not prepared to accept a definition in this uh, new treaty, which lays down that there will be, at the end, a federal vacation. Jacques Delors, president of the European Commission and a champion of federalism, took that as a challenge. He effectively accused the British government of nitpicking because of the political problems over Europe it faces at Westminster. And Mrs Thatcher is tonight expected to provide a reminder of how acute those problems are. She's in America where she addressed the issue of Europe in March and it's thought she'll warn that unless the European community preserves nationhood, it'll collapse. It was reported she'd toned down her remarks some of her allies now say that Mr. Delors' words could provoke her to speak her mind. What worries us is that Mr. Delors' plans almost allow no powers to Westminster. It's not really a question, quite frankly, of whether we hold on to power here, but we're taking away the power from a democracy. If people don't like what the government's doing, they can chuck out the government and put in another one. If you don't like what Brussels is doing, there's absolutely nothing which the people can do about it. 
I think if Mrs Thatcher points out the dangers to democracy of the EC, this will be good. John Major will be arguing Britain's corner in Luxembourg next week. He will once again be faced with the need to reconcile the demands of Britain's community partners with the dangers of a split within his party. Nervousness about Mrs Thatcher's speech tonight helped put sterling under renewed pressure on the foreign exchange markets. In London, the pound closed at 2.92 Deutschmarks, down a fennig on the day. Against the American dollar, it lost nearly one and a half cents. Now back to our main story, and within the last hour, Iraq has announced that Douglas Brand, the British engineer jailed for life for spying, has been freed on the personal orders of Saddam Hussein. Douglas Brand was arrested last September while trying to escape from Iraq. A former member of the Special Boat Squadron, he'd been working for the Iraqis to help clear underwater mines from the Shat al Arab waterway, which was littered with explosives after the Iran-Iraq war. Brand was charged with spying and last month was sentenced to life in prison. At the family home in Bankery near Aberdeen, his wife Rosemary campaigned for his release, insisting that he was a businessman, not a spy. The case was also taken up by former Prime Minister Edward Heath, who visited Baghdad during the Gulf crisis to persuade Saddam Hussein to release British hostages. Mr Heath says he now hopes the release of Mr Brand will be seen as a step forward in resolving the problems between Britain and Iraq. But the news took Brand's friends by surprise. I was talking to uh, Rosemary, Mrs. Brand, um, only an hour ago, and we were making plans for her to come down here in two days' time to attend the service at Westminster Cathedral, which is being given on behalf of uh, Ian Richter, who, as you know, is still held prisoner in Baghdad. And uh, neither Rosemary or I had uh, any knowledge of the fact that Mr. Heath was uh, intervening on behalf of Douglas. The British government has also told Iraq that it would block any move to lift United Nations sanctions until Mr. Brand was released. Historic inter-party talks on the future of Northern Ireland have finally begun after seven weeks of negotiations by the Northern Ireland Secretary, Mr. Peter Brook. The talks at Stormont were the first roundtable discussions between the province's political leaders for 16 years. They went ahead after last-minute agreement from the Reverend Ian Paisley to the Australian diplomat Sir Ninian Stephen as chairman of the second stage of the talks, which will involve the Dublin government. Mr Brooke arrived to convene what, in his own words, should be a new beginning for Ulster politics. But no sooner had the table been set for talks than the Democratic Unionists left Stormont. They were giving last-minute consideration to the choice of chairman for the second stage talks involving the Irish government. But fears of another major impasse soon subsided with Northern Ireland Minister Brian Mawinney saying the DUP needed more time. And minutes later they duly returned, saying yes to the choice of Chairman Saninian Stephen. The former Australian Governor-General helped the country through its deepest modern crisis after the sacking of Gough Whitlam's Labour government. He has also campaigned for the rights of Aborigines and ethnic minorities. It's believed he'll provide a calm centre for the talks here, and also a strong sense of purpose. With his acceptance, stage one, the inter-party talks on Northern Ireland's political future, was set to begin. Not everyone involved, though, wanted to describe them as historic. Let's not uh, say anything until we have the outcome. And that's why we kept all you press men out, because I said, and I still continue to say, the time to take photographs is when we have achieved something. Each party leader had two delegates at the table and others sitting behind them. Unionists were to the right of the Secretary of State, nationalists to the left. At eight minutes to one, Mr. Brooke, flanked by Stormont Minister Brian Mawinney, delivered the opening statement on an initiative that's been nearly 18 months in the making. John Alderdice of the Cross Community Alliance and John Hume of the SDLP set out their party's positions on devolution and power sharing. The two unionist leaders raised questions. They'll present their statements tomorrow morning. Mr. Brooke's tireless effort to bring the parties together has reached a milestone, but what lies ahead will be fraught with difficulty particularly stage two, when the Unionists will be head-to-head -head with the Irish government. In the chair for those talks will be Sir Ninian Stephen. The key point won't be his knowledge of Irish affairs. The real test will be his diplomatic skill. Andrew Simmons, News at 10 at Stormont. Joining us now on the telephone from Melbourne is Sir Ninian Stephen. Sir Ninian, given by your own admission you know so little about the issues involved, what realistic chance do you think there is of your concluding these talks successfully? I couldn't possibly venture a guess on that. Um, I think that that's obviously going to depend very much on the parties themselves and their 
uh, wish or their determination to reach some conclusion. Do you not think that you are so much of a compromise candidate that your effectiveness has been, in effect, been reduced before you actually begin to chair these talks? Well, again, I think that's going to be a matter for the participants, uh, the extent to which they uh, think that I can usefully be uh, a contributing factor to success. When do you hope to be in Northern Ireland? Uh, I don't know. Um, obviously, within the relatively near future, but um, the timetable has not, as far as I know, yet been determined. Sir Ninian, thank you very much indeed. Okay. Detectives are investigating the deaths of four babies who were treated at Grantham Hospital in Lincolnshire. They say it'll be next month before they know whether there was a criminal cause for the illnesses which killed the babies. The police are also investigating unexplained respiratory attacks in 14 children who'd been in the same ward. One nurse is now on police bail. Five-year-old Brad Gibson is one of the youngsters at the centre of the inquiry. He spent today happily at school. But two months ago, he had a heart attack after being admitted to the children's ward at Grantham Hospital with a chest infection. At the time, his mother spoke about the shock of his sudden collapse. When we arrived at the hospital, they ushered us into a small room and asked us if we wanted to talk to the chaplain who is there for counselling. And the sister who was on duty, well, she came in and told us that Bradley had arrested and there were very serious complications and they weren't quite sure what was going to happen to him. Police were alerted after another child who collapsed in the hospital was found to have an unusually high level of insulin in his blood. Now all records of patients admitted to the children's ward, including some who died, are being checked. Detectives have confirmed that one nurse has been questioned and released on police bail. I set up an incident room on the 7th of May and I'm still looking into that matter. It's too early yet to say whether there is anything at all sinister in this case. Quite clearly, uh, the whole investigation rests upon medical evidence. I have employed senior medical advisors. It's necessary for them all to come together, uh, and I've arranged a meeting for the 2nd of July, at which time the whole matter will be discussed. Until that time, I'm not in a position to say any more. Tonight, friends and relatives of nurses at the hospital refuse to discuss the matter. Terry Lloyd, News at 10, Lincolnshire. The South African Parliament today repealed the Population Registration Act, which since 1950 has required South Africans to be classified by race. It was one of the basic apartheid laws. President de Klerk said a new constitution, which would give black people the vote, was now possible within a few years. And he said his government would do everything it could to get multi-party talks going. For Sandra Lang, the repeal of the notorious Population Registration Act came 25 years too late. Born into a white family, at the age of 11, she was reclassified by apartheid as a coloured, a bureaucratic decision which consigned her to a life of poverty among South Africa's disadvantaged black majority. Even if that uh, didn't happen, I would, I would live a better life. But now I'm, I'm not living a better life. I'm just hoping that my, my kids can grow up. There was little comfort for her in hearing President de Klerk consign apartheid to the past. Everybody is free as well from the disparagement and denial which so often were the consequences of the legislation we are repealing. And everybody is liberated from the moral dilemma caused by this legislation which was born and nurtured under different circumstances in an apartheid era. The move, which clears the way for sanctions against South Africa to be lifted and its international isolation ended, was opposed only by the pro-apartheid conservatives. We are losing our nationality today, but uh, we are certain that we will find new ways of establishing our identity as Afrikaners, and we hope and we pray that in due course we will restore our right to self-determination. The repeal heralds the end of four decades of apartheid which separated blacks from whites from the cradle to the grave. In those 40 years, thousands of blacks died opposing the system. Thousands more were detained and tortured. The Land Acts, limiting black ownership of the land, and the Group Areas Act, determining where blacks could live, have already been repealed. Now, although the existing racial register remains, 
new babies will not be classified by the color of their skin. The representatives of the black majority say it will take a generation for things truly to change. You know, the government is creeping these laws at a time when whites have been so, you know, empowered that they will continue to be able to maintain apartheid by economic factors. When the sun sets and the factories close down and everything else closes down, the vast majority of black South Africans must head to Soweto. And blacks still have no vote. They will get that only when a new democratic constitution has been negotiated. Kevin Dunn, News at 10, Johannesburg. After the general election in India, the Congress party say they'll form the next government, though they're expected to fall about 30 short of an overall majority in Parliament. With two-thirds of the seats declared, Congress I had 186. The Hindu nationalist BJP, 77. The Janata Dal and its National Front allies, 36. And the Left Front Communists, 24. Congress I are considering coalition with any party other than the BJP. They also have to choose a successor to the assassinated Mr. Rajiv Gandhi as party leader and prime minister. And we're going back now to our main story, the release of the British engineer Mr. Douglas Brand from Iraq on the personal orders of President Saddam Hussein. On the telephone now is Mr. Brand's son, Mr. Michael Brand. Mr. Brand, were you aware of the attempts to free your father by Mr. Heath? We were only vaguely aware. We knew the Foreign Office was doing everything in their power to get him released, but we weren't in on the specific details of what was being done. And when did you know the specific details tonight? About an hour ago. Have you had a chance to talk to your father? No, we haven't. We believe he's still actually in Iraq and will be travelling to Amman tomorrow morning where he'll be handed over to the British authorities there. Have you had any idea at all about his awareness of the attempts being made by Mr Heath to set him free? We have none at all. It's, it's literally come so quickly that we haven't been able to get any further and when, information. And, and when was your last contact with, 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 with your father? The last time we spoke to him was at the end of August last year. Mr. Brand, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Scientists in the Philippines say the worst of the volcanic eruptions from Mount Pinatubo are probably over. But the exodus from the worst affected areas gathers pace. A report next. Plus, John Smith says Labour will have a minimum wage, whatever the unions think. And the real Lady Abadar stands up. That's in a couple of minutes. I love you very much. I love you very much. Hi, Annie. I... Oh, how are you? Oh, good. You're fine. I... Yes, I'm fine. It's fine. Annie, I... Bye. Dear Annie, did I say fine? What I meant to say was, I love you. For a family day out that's really different, visit Oakwood Park. You pay only once and after that all the rides are free. Whatever your age, Oakwood's fun for everyone. Replacing all of this because of water damage might cost £300. Could I have prevented it? Yes, with Thompson's water seal. Repairing this water damage properly could cost me hunts. Thompson's water seal would have prevented it. Brush Thompson's onto wood, 
brick or a concrete patio, and it penetrates to form a long-lasting barrier water can't get dust. Now I can prevent water damage and save money with Thompson's Water Seal. Thompson's Water Seal, a great defense against repair expense. What I meant to say was, I love you. Don't get stuck without a stamp. Scientists in the Philippines say the volcano Mount Pinatubo is calming down after a week of violent eruptions which have killed more than 100 people. A second United States aircraft carrier is now on its way to the area to help to rescue 20,000 American military personnel and their families who are stationed near the volcano. A fleet of U.S. warships has already taken 5,000 of them to safety. Escaping the volcano in style tonight, Americans clamber aboard the U.S. Navy's brand new aircraft carrier, the Abraham Lincoln. 5,000 left today, servicemen's wives and children and family pets. They'll sail to the Philippine island of Cebu, and from there, charter flights will take them home to the States. I want to get away from the danger. Well, I hate leaving my husband, but there's not much to stay for. They're leaving a Subic Bay naval base almost buried under volcanic ash and mud. More than 100 buildings collapsed. A young American girl was killed. There's no power or water, only puddles to shave in. In a longer post city, the ash will take months to clean up. In places, it's more than a foot deep. Whole rows of buildings were destroyed under the weight of sludge. Homes, shops, businesses, a church, and the local bus station. Several people were crushed to death. The body count continues to rise. It's a world-class disaster. The whole city is uh, in shambles. Uh, it's just like a nuclear bomb hit us. You know, it's just like that movie The Day After. <sighs> well, we're gonna get over it. The international airport in Manila remains closed tonight. The ash even falling here, 55 miles from the volcano. In Manila and other affected areas, schools also remain closed. And today, the health department advised people to stay indoors until the ash dust stops falling. More than 115,000 Filipino refugees have now made it to evacuation camps in the capital. The president, Cory Aquino, has pledged more than two million pounds in aid for these victims, many of whom have lost their homes forever. Mark Austin, News at 10, Manila. Here, the shadow chancellor, Mr. John Smith, said today Labour wouldn't abandon its plans for a national minimum wage, despite opposition from some trade unions. He told electricians at their Blackpool conference that Labour wouldn't turn its back on the low paid. He said a flaw on wages would raise Britain's social standards. The elections and the nares are against a national minimum wage because they want to keep skilled workers' pay differentials. The Conservatives say the Labour plan would cost two million jobs. The Shadow Chancellor was in no mood to compromise with the electricians' afternoon. Yesterday, their leader, Eric Hammond, had called a compulsory minimum wage fundamentally wrong. Lane Mr. said it was essential if a Labour government would adopt its social order. That is why the Labour Party is clear we need to introduce statutory enforceable legal minimum wage as part of the obligation to the community and also part of the clear democratic decision we've arrived at in the movement. Labour wants everyone to be guaranteed £3.40 an hour. That's just about half the average hourly wage, rising to third when the country called it. They claim that would four million out of the petty trap, but with two half billion pounds country's wage bill. Campaigners at Slope are enthusiastic. Something like ten million is in now, unless council have reached a decent threshold. The taxpayer pays in trying to subsidise those firms continue to blow wages, and their work have to have wages topped through security benefits. The employed pay because those families do not have the same power to be able to buy the goods and services that the people produce. But the government believe on this issue they have it on the run. We have the lead, but where they need help, we help them through family credit, which is the sensibility of doing it. What Labour would do is to introduce this absurd policy of a minimum wage, which would destroy the jobs. Eric had back other union leaders is adamant opposed. He says unskilled workers get a rise. His skilled workers will also demand a big risk. This ended up and, and we will choose to exercise some spite on your uh, skill. Uh, and not all. We will not, uh, we will not listen to them.
It's around but could have without. The sort of skilled workers these delicate represent are the people who cheated in large numbers for Mrs. Cher and Abel Mutti sure they win back. James News at 10, Blackpool. Prince Charles, who's suffering from a bad back, has cancelled all one of his engagements until the beginning of next month. Last week, he advised by doctors to give our favourites polo for the time being the campaign. Prince, who's colonel in chief of Oshkars, will end the parade of Britain's golf courses in the city of London on Friday. Mr. Arthur Seville, president of the National of Mind, was appeared court in Sheffield with his general secretary charged with failure to keep a union accounts. The prosecution said there was no suggestion of dishonesty personal gain. The case is brought by the trade union certificate officer. Arthur Skill and the NM General Secretary P. Heath had arrived for days ring in comfort and rest for met a small group of supporters. The two leaders, the NUM, do not charges concerning the maintenance and subsection of the audited accounts. Top lawyers, including Michael Mansfield, who defended Birmingham 6, have been hard to challenge prosecution. The case expected on several days, and Pack Court, the prosecution said that allegations concerning Mom Libya and the City Union had a considerable media into its own instigation, Usman and Barrett. Gavin Lovman QC pushed a report which prompted the citation officer to lay charge against the UM and its leaders. The prosecution had to do live report to Batske, but then argued that because the NUM had commissioned a document, it was protected by privilege. Also came some hidden information which was not attainable in court. After a day of legal argument, magistrate ruled some of the material got beached. Tomorrow, defense lawyers tried to get the case throughout. Mr. Cape, New Ten, Sheffield. Golf and Stuart and Cot Simpson were still tied after two holes their play around in the East Open and Minnesota had reached a 10 1 0 par set in two over. As the things for women were announced today and they were pretty much the ring of the players in the world, Stedberg, a men's list, Boris Becker, he did two, Ivan Lent three, Monica Lish, a woman's number one seed, for by Steph Graf and Gabrielle Sabatini. And the maze again, Iraq has seen Doug Brand, a British engineer, held for life spy. It's understood some who say that the relief really artist to Britain's Ed Heath. His free has been what demands of the British government for the lifting of sanction against Iraq. On this program, his son Michael, the family, would link to Britain tomorrow to meet him. And the first secretary to her has rejected the idea of federal Europe, who's today in Luxembourg. Mr. Jacques Delors said the European Union was too important to take into consideration a momentary political problem on Member 8. Frauds detectives are still looking for a woman calling herself Lady Abadar who has disappeared together with an estimated £1.7 million from a hospital charity. Rosemary Aberdow, the daughter of an ex-doctor, was sacked by charity last week. Police say they are now making worries about her as for way Brazil. Chambers in this exclusive test side of Pump Conks, Lady Aberdow was the man who had it all. From the £2,500 a week lavishly finished penis to the Bentham Mazine, just like this one, which she used to drive work. Now they're learning it was all up to see. The tile of charity Pfizer, who mingled with royals and said she was worth a million, had no title, no fortune, and is wanted by the squad. The album shows a glimpse of party-loving lifestyle. The host of the most, these guests sing little and happy smiles. One party for a friend and her pet dog cost three thousand pounds. Her chauffeur, see her off duty, enjoyed the party life. Today he was moving out the four hundred pounds a week that she did for him. I've got to go home to my parents. What, what do you feel about this? I'm very upset. And sh did you seem too into? Of course, yes. Yeah. In better officials at the National Hospital Charity were counting their losses today. The lady has vanished, also missing almost all their funds, one point seven million pounds. I don't know who she is, and I don't know where the is. Much of it has already been sent on lavish parties. No doubt everybody's read Daily Press already. Lady Abadow, the fun-loving fake, even best startling resemblance to the real Lady Abadow, who lives a modest life in Scotland, and is getting lots of calls from her own friends. Uh, very much so. They've been ringing asking me where he is. <laughs> and how come they haven't been invited to any other parties? And the bogus lady is now thought to be starting a long holiday in Brazil. Ken Reese, News at 10, Chelsea, London. That's 10 tonight from Fiona and from me. Good night. Good evening. There's going to be quite a change in the weather later this week. Instead of coming from the north, the rain's going to start coming from the west. So we can all look forward to some much warmer rain than we've had over the last few days. So much for the good news. The bad news is for the next 24 hours, it's staying cool and mostly cloudy with a lot of showers around, especially in the north and west. So the latest pictures from satellite, most of Britain covered with cloud of one sort or another. The thickest up in the north there, that's where most of the showers are. But out behind me, you can see the next lot of cloud for later this week already moving towards us. And that means more general rain, I think, for southern and western parts of Britain later in the week. 
Back to tonight, though, first of all, many of the showers in central and eastern parts of Britain will die out, but the further north and west you are, the more likely you are to see more showers and bits of rain through the night. Nowhere particularly cold, as you can see. On to tomorrow, then, a picture much like we're finishing today with, really, a lot of cloud, especially over Scotland, Northern Ireland and Northern England. You may get the odd glimpse of the sun during the day, but really it's a rather cloudy picture with showery bits of rain for time to time. Further south and east we look, well, a little bit of sunshine there, I think, but even then, you'd like to see the showers developing during the afternoon. So, by afternoon, most places suffering from the threat of showers or longer spells of rain. A quick look at the temperatures for tomorrow, they're much like they've been today, really, 15 or 16 at best, just into the 60s, more typically 13 or 14 further north. Good night. Good evening. Now the news for the West Country. Work still going on tonight to reconnect electricity to thousands of homes and businesses in Chippenham. They were cut off after an explosion in a substation this afternoon. No one was hurt, but damage was extensive. Seven Electricity say most properties should be back on power tonight, but the Westinghouse factory probably won't be back on before midnight. The number of shops closing in Bath has doubled in the past year. Traders blame high interest and increases in VAT and business rates. Bath prides itself on being Britain's second shopping city after London. But even here, the retailing recession has begun to bite. Figures out today show that the number of empty shops in the city centre more than doubled in the year to the end of March, from 31 to 70, or 1 in 10 of the total. A pressure group set up to fight for the city's small traders said its fears were being confirmed. I know it's the classic response, but I think it has to be, we told you so. Um, we started campaigning last year on the issue that shops and small businesses were being forced out of uh, business by high rents and the uniform business rate, and exactly what we said would happen is happening. In addition, shops have been hit by the increase in VAT, which came into force after the last budget. In a city that prides itself on being a regional shopping centre, empty shops like this are clearly bad for Bath's image. But city council officials say that the problem isn't noticeably worse than anywhere else, and they're confident that business will pick up again when the recession is over. We're certainly concerned about it, and we do obviously monitor the, the number of shops which are empty and try and take effective action for those in the council's own control to ensure that they are relet as quickly as possible and certainly the indications are from the shops we have on the market at the moment that uh, there is a great deal of interest and they are letting remarkably quickly considering the economic circumstances. The council say the recession is more to blame for shop closures than rent and rate rises and they point to the fact that the number of new shops continues to grow. Almost four-fifths of Bath's workforce is in service industries, so the city's Chamber of Commerce is worried about any downturn which hits people's spending power. It's begun a new drive to attract shoppers to the city. More customers can sustain more shops, and that means fewer sites like this. Thousands of defence jobs intended for the Bristol area may have been lost to Dorset. The county's development committee has been told that a suggestion to switch the jobs from Canesham to Winfrith has been favourably received by the Ministry of Defence. Jobs from Bath and Portland could also go there. The MOD said it wanted to build offices on the Cadbury factory site in Canesham, despite objections from Avon County Council and some local protest groups. Now it's looking at other locations, including some in the Bristol area. A final decision is expected in the next few months. In Gloucestershire, parents and teachers are claiming victory in their fight to keep open four small schools. They lobbied members of the county's education committee and members agreed that the schools should stay. There's tight security in Wiltshire this week to prevent hippie travellers reaching Stonehenge for the summer solstice on Friday morning. The travellers with over 200 vehicles have set up two camps on the Wiltshire-Hampshire border. 150 have gathered at Stockbridge, 50 miles east of the monument. And a makeshift camp has been set up in Chilbolton. The travellers have been served with notices under the Public Order Act, requiring them to move on. Over the last few years, police have increased their presence around the stones in the run-up to the summer solstice. A four-mile exclusion zone has again been set up. 
There's fears that trouble will fare this year after festivals at Glastonbury in Somerset and Doynton in Avon were cancelled. Police believe the other festivals normally draw the travellers away from Wiltshire. Bristol today joined the growing number of authorities getting tough on dogs. New bylaws mean it's illegal to let dogs mess in some city parks and in four others dogs have been banned altogether. In Somerset, people from Milverton are campaigning to stop two brothers being evicted from the village garage later this week. They say the garage is indispensable. Milverton residents packed the garage forecourt today to discuss how they can save the business Mervyn and Terry Bellamy have run here for more than 30 years. The brothers have been served notice to leave by the landowners who want to build there. They failed to stop the repossession order in court. Villagers say they'll be there in force on Wednesday when bailiffs call to evict the men. I'm a, a woman on my own with a car and I just rely on them hook, line and sinker. Residents face a 10 mile trip to Taunton for petrol and repairs if the garage closes. 14 workers at the sawmill next door could also lose their jobs if the land is sold off. For the Bellamy's, the strain of contemplating a life on the dole was beginning to tell today. What can you now do, though, to, to keep the garage open? Well, we could discuss it with the family if they wish, but they don't seem, they seem quite adamant to get rid of it. Even um, one member of the family who used to work here has expressed his support for us. Um, they, they won't discuss it, they won't value it, we can't buy it. Where do you go from here? Landowner Alan Fouracre had nothing to say on the matter at his Wellington home today. Hello, Mr oh, Fouracre. Volunteers plan to guard the garage round the clock to keep the bailiffs out. They've scarcely seen any conflict at their quiet village before, but the garage, they say, is essential to their rural lives. An airline pilot on his way to Heathrow to take charge of a flight has been arrested in Wiltshire on a drink driving charge. The pilot, who was due to fly to Venezuela, was charged after failing a breath test near Marlborough. He's been bailed to appear in court next month. A Russian pilot and his English navigator had a miraculous escape today when their microlight hit power lines and crash landed near Bristol. Sergei Marcheski was taking part in the microlight round Britain race, flying a model made by the Marlborough company Solar Wings. Is it is it dangerous? Um, I think uh, no more dangerous than to drive the car. Today's accident happened after he realised he was running low on fuel and tried to land by a filling station at Tog Hill near Wick. But as they came down, they hit an 11,000 volt cable and crashed 20 feet into the ground. Local people carried them clear, and a nurse who saw the accident gave first aid. Sergei is in French A hospital but isn't ser seriously hurt. The fire brigade say the pair were lucky not to have been killed. Now cricket and Gloucestershire's rain-affected game against Nottinghamshire ended in a draw. Knots were set 281 to win and ended on 165 for four. And now look at the weather for the next two days. I know we need the rain, but this is getting ridiculous. Guess what it's going to do tomorrow, just like today, really. Mostly cloudy with some heavy and prolonged showers and a moderate northwesterly breeze. Wednesday's outlook dry and bright at first, but wait for it. Rain spreading from the west during the afternoon. That's the news. Good evening. Now at Vision Express, half price lenses. Yes, buy one lens and get one free in about an hour. And there's thousands of frames to choose from at Vision Express. Oh, what have we got? A packet of new Walker's Ruffles. Yeah, ruffles are ridged potato crisps. The actual crisp itself shaped into lots of little peaks. Yeah, I'm still here. And if I'm right, these ridges hold in a lot more flavor and make ruffles extra crunchy. Yeah, good work, Mac. I was right. These ruffles are damn fine crisps. Ruffles, more ridges, more taste. You never thought you'd find a Formula One inspired engine in a car that cruises at a whispering 65 decimals. You never thought you'd find 
anti-lock brakes, catalytic converter, and cruise control in an executive car that takes you beyond convention. to liter I from Honda. range of products that are high in taste but lower in fat. It's delicious and light, it's delight. It's delicious and light, it's delight. Would you believe bran could be so light? Would you believe bran could be so crisp? Believe light crisp Kellogg's bran flakes. So light they'll lift your whole day. Spots like to come out at night. They don't like new clear is still night clear. So before you say night, say night clear. Hi, I'm sorry I'm late. Shall we eat first? It's a good idea. We'll try that new place in the I do like some, I just don't know if I fancy it now. But you like Chinese. I could handle a spaghetti, definitely. Not in that time, you know. You don't want Chinese, you don't want fish, you don't want a hamburger. What do you want? Something different. Made with 100% white-breasted chicken, mayonnaise and iceberg lettuce. When you want a change, you want a chicken sandwich. That's a good film. Same it. Have you? When? Mostin. Here it is. Chez moi. <laughs> it's small, isn't it? Compact and bijou, Mostin. Compact and bijou. You bought this. Not absolutely my first choice. Now the Alliance and Leicester are offering the best mortgage deals they've had in ages, you needn't cramp your style with second best. Pop in and we'll help you buy something a little bit bigger. Of course, the garden's an absolute picture in the summer. You get a smarter investor at the Alliance and Leicester. Hello. Now, don't forget that your nighttime programs start off with Sports World Extra at 12.30. Right now, this is a harrowing film, The Hollow Point.